Um, so what does energy medicine do? And what an energy practitioner does is senses the natural frequency, the natural energy oscillations that are coming, that pond coming off the human or the animal, they, we learn to feel them. And so it can assist in a diagnosis and it can help to treat because think of it like an orchestra. You know, if, if the second flute is out of tune and you have a really, really good maestro, he or she's going to go, hey, you, you're flat. Um, you know, if there's more and more things out of tune, then the audience is going to get it. Like, ooh, this does not sound very good. So the energy practitioner's um, purpose is to kind of come in, feel what's going on, and help to tune up the orchestra. And we'll talk about how that happens. It's, it's based on how waves interact with each other. So the two most important things that waves do, right? Electromagnetic radiation, whether it's light wave or sound wave or a microwave, doesn't matter. Um, they all do something and it's called resonance and entrainment. Resonance is just like what it sounds. You know, if something resonates with you. So if two frequencies are similar, they're gonna interact. And then if they're, they're not gonna be perfect, that's gonna be pretty hard. So what happens is one of them gets the other one to come into synchronicity. They will, they will, it's called entrain. They'll start waving together. And there's a wonderful YouTube video. I don't put it in the presentation because it takes a couple minutes, but Google it. It's really fun. It's the 32 metronome synchronization. So there's 32 metronomes. If you don't know what that, if you're not a musician, that's it's what's used to keep a beat it's like a pendulum, click, click, click. And they're all going in different um, speeds. And then they all come together. It's really neat. It's really neat. And we see this in nature, you know, a school of fish. You could have a thousand fish and they all go bip, all together. According to Newtonian physics, that's impossible. It would be like cars at a red light, like first fish, second fish. So they're acting as one unit. All of their biofields are entrained. They're, they're connected and they're acting as one unit. Um, I think I was destined to do this because I remember being in health class and they were talking about women and menstrual cycles and how if they live together, they start cycling together. And it drove me crazy because I kept asking the teacher, why? And she would say, well, because. I'm like, but why? And now I know why, because your internal rhythms, your heart rate, your brain waves, your cycles of all kinds, sleep cycles, everything is giving off a, a radiation, an electromagnetic, and everybody then starts to come into synchronicity. It's why, you know, when there's a solar flare, it disrupts that, that synchronicity, full moons, things like that really can disrupt what we're feeling in the, in the earth, because the earth has its own resonance, its own frequency. It's called the Schumann resonance. And, you know, it, it's sort of created by all the frequencies of the living things on earth, whether it's a dirt or a tree, but it's also way, way up beyond where we can see it. There's a lot of electrical activity and that just kind of pummels in and it, and, and it does like a wave kind of, if you're a, a musician, you're blowing through a flute or a clarinet or something, that wave's going through there and it's going up and down. And so it creates this frequency um, and that's called the Schumann resonance. And supposedly, I haven't been able to get my hands on this paper, but I had listened to a lecture where supposedly in Europe in the 60s, they had people in a shielded room and they're starting to do more of these experiments now where they shield people from the natural frequencies around them. And they let everybody's biorhythms get all irregular because we're meant to be in nature. Um, so we don't know whether it's light or dark and everybody got discombobulated. And then they started adding frequencies. And the one that kind of got everybody's biorhythms back into sync was around 10 Hertz. That's what the earth's frequency is, 10 hertz. So when people say, well, I'm a tree hugger or I feel better in nature, mm -hmm. that's how we were designed. We are of the same frequency as the earth. 
Um, so now I'm just going to talk a little bit about why it's been difficult for the scientific community to sort of understand this. Um, and you, from what I understand, you've got Dr. Ben, Benston coming up, Bill Benston in a couple of weeks. And so I'm just going to like give some spotty research because his stuff is going to knock your socks off. So do not miss him. He's just awesome. Um, and he certainly gets this, you know, the thing we have to remember, which is kind of way far ahead, uh, a lot of scientists just couldn't understand this, but, you know, in any observation, there, there's a, a bias, you know, we're looking at things only from the perspective of what we can understand. And I kind of call this, you don't know what you don't know. So we do the best we can but there is a lot of, of bias that we have to get over in understanding these concepts. But I wanted to kind of just highlight some really cool research that's going on so that you can see, oh my gosh, this, you know, this isn't just theory, this is like real. And as they're being able to measure these things, these little photons and, and our body's energy, um, we're finding that you know, when we have a wound, there's this energy that comes that helps. So the white blood cells and other cells that are gonna help things regenerate are kind of going along this energy, sort of, you know, they're just going with the flow. Um, we've now found that there's areas on our DNA that actually respond to electromagnetic fields. That can be a good thing or a bad thing. We'll talk about that. And then things like our tendons, our bones, our structure, um, have uh, they respond to electromagnetic fields? They need electromagnetic fields in order to to um, be healthy. Some uh, um, this is some of my favorite research um, because fascia is the connect our connective tissue. It literally connects everything. You'll hear people say, "Oh, the skin is your largest organ. Mm -mm, it's your fascia." It's around your brain, it's around your muscles, it's around your nerves, it makes up your tendons, your ligaments, it's everywhere. And guess what they've discovered? Fascia is piezoelectric, which means it conducts electricity. <laughs> oh, isn't that interesting? Um, <coughs> excuse me. So when, and when you put your pressure on it, like a massage therapist would do, that electrical activity lines up, you know, it goes from, oh, it's electrical all over to, ooh, like a meridian, like an acupuncture meridian. Um, and I just think that's so neat. And there's a wonderful international society for fascia research, and they come together every couple of years, and just all this great research is coming out. So to me, fascia is one of the most important ways that our bodies are conducting this electromagnetic um, energy. Um, now we're getting sophisticated enough that we can measure these things called biophotons. And it started out, you know, from wounds, like if, if we had a wound, then they could kind of measure these little things popping out. Now we're getting more sophisticated. So there's machines that can go, oh, you know, your, your biophotons don't, they're not so good whether it's in your brain or your overall health. And again, going back to Star Trek, if anybody's a Trekkie, the doctor always had a, an instrument about the size of my cell phone and he or she would just, you know, come up and do it and it would make a funny noise. And then they would look and go, oh, it's, you know, so-and-so you're in heart failure. That's what's coming. That's what's coming. And that is just really, really neat. Um, plants. I mean, plants have wonderful energy fields. And they respond to energy medicine. Um, they've done studies where if the plant is unhealthy for whatever reason, and they give it energy treatment, they start to get healthy again. Um, they'll kind of, they'll measure the fluorescent light um, and look at how things are. And they can see these energy fields communicating among the plants. And now all the amazing plant research that's coming out about how trees communicate underground and oh, it's just incredible. So um, that, that's just really, really neat stuff. Um, and here is another fun fact that kind of goes along with um, the tension was so thick you can cut it with a knife. Here's a great study that was done and they had two people sitting five feet apart. 
okay? So not even close to each other, touching each other. And they measured the brain waves and the heart waves, okay? And what they found was one of the heart waves, the R wave, the heart wave, would match the brain wave of the other person. So they're not touching. But what was happening was just like those metronomes, they're starting to get into synchronicity. And so it's showing some things happening between those two people and that something is an energy field and their energy fields are coming into synchronicity. So, so that's why, you know, if you meet somebody, you kind of go, oh, I don't know why I don't like them. Like they've given you no reason. Well, the reason may be their energy field might not be so nice. And instinctively you're going, hmm. and think about animals, right? When an animal really like somebody or is very cautious around somebody, uh huh. they're very good. We'll talk about that in a second. They are really good at, at feeling energy fields. Um, so <clears throat> I always say you can't, you can't fool an intuitive and you can't fool an animal ever. Mm -hmm.